I won't even need the Taj. I have $700 worth of Afghani rupees I left with Peace Ali. Uh, yeah, don't need to touch that. Uh, just middle uh, Western clubs with the natives. And I can uh, support myself, establish this room as my world headquarters for the whole summer. <laughs> no worries about that, mate. Well, I'm worried sick about this backwards Aussie slang uh, uh, slipping into her vocabulary. Uh, While well, she goes downstairs, she's got to have a word with Bay. Uh, tighten up her new uh, <laughs> energy feedback loop. Yeah. She dramatically slips the British five pound note. Oh, it's a fancy note, huh? Not like those tiny crumpled up Afghani rubies. This is a British uh, British bank note. Yeah, she slips, slips that across the reception desk to Bay as silent testimony for their wisdom. For him... Uh, Directing Oz. What a fun guy. <laughs> yeah. What a nice person. Uh, yeah, to the uh, free missionary room. Uh, all afternoon they hang out. Playing backgammon. And swatting flies in the glaring desert light. Uh, all afternoon, and they drink, drink that gold spot orange soda from Tehran? Oh, don't, don't, don't touch that stuff. Yeah, uh, waiting for the once a day bus to come in from Kandahar to fi finally roll in. Yeah, only one bus. The hippies in Kandahar, they got to get up early, get on that bus. 550 kilometers, huh? <laughs> and uh, Bay holds court at his reception desk, and he, which overlooks the three, well, funky, they got kind of oil cloth, cheap oil cloth over them. And then in the background is this sooty uh, medieval kitchen. They do make the, the bread, the Afghani flat bread, you know, rice and the pilaf and, you know, throw a couple of eggs on that to get fancy, huh? Um, yeah, and behind me, oh, it's so nice. Uh, you see, the, the it's all windows and horse-drawn tongas are going back and forth. And those jingling bells, they swell and then fade away. Sure, you get this lovely atmosphere, <laughs> 18th century vibe, you know. No pain, bro, like I said. <laughs> no. Um, well, um, Bay learns his English uh, from German European travelers, and he loves these wandering hippies. Uh, picks up that hippie uh, way of speaking real good. Yeah, goes with the flow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, strange hippies from the far side of the Basra States. <laughs> and they all kind of melt down and look like uh, Earth people? Some kind of a tribe forming up here? First global tribe he's ever encountered. Well, and one very private reason why Babe loves to befriend freaks is that he is uh, into alcohol. That's his spice of choice in a hashish-saturated realm of Western Asia. They can't buy it. It's against the law. Islamic people, not, not, that's the desert elixir, devil elixir of the crusaders. You can't buy it, but. If you're a foreigner with a foreign passport, you have a special dispensation to buy, well, a little bit of hard liquor. Well, and occasionally, passing freak might have a pint of Johnny Walker in the bottom of his pack. Who knows? 
if you don't ask. Oh, so, well, bay, uh, yeah, in the middle drawer of his desk, he's got, he's got slabs. He's got kilo slabs of hashish for serious barter material. Any alcohol, he can, you know, yeah, well, the Zadu has the queen of Chitra. They come to an understanding that uh, Bay will keep his eyes open for any handsome hippies, especially with overstuffed packs, you know, um, headed for Iran and guide them to the, um, you know, upstairs, down the hall, last room, facing the street, part that beaded per curtain, get them in there. <laughs> Where the Zadu, oh, they're so overburdened with gear, huh? Oh, Zadu is, huh? He just plies them with endless hoogs of ash. Yeast. They can't even see straight after the first 40 minutes with him, huh? Complimentary. <laughs> Hashi hookah compliments a bay there, huh? And she will preach the wisdom of traveling light and, uh, well, Nonchalantly sniff out any alcohol they might be. So we talk them out of it. <laughs> you know, leave that booze behind so she can gift it to that hunky, handsome, big, his uh, large hands, huh? Big. Um, yeah, leave the booze behind for bail. Well, bay. All right. They're kind of going to rehearse their uh, show a little bit. So bay, uh, well, he, you know, he goes with, uh, did you hear about the new prison just after uh, Torbati Jam? Where they throw people in who are dumb enough to try to import alcohol. I mean, people are, are disappearing all over the place. It's just, where did they go, huh? Well, the white's out of us, huh? She doesn't like to be upstaged, even by big burly. <laughs> Charismatic bay. Oh, what a hunk. Uh, so she adjusts her turban. You know, and um, starts pacing back and forth between uh, those three funky tables and the reception desk. Uh, yeah, kind of warming up. And uh, 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 it's a showtime for the great granddaughter of Rudyard Kipling. Uh, pull up a chair. It's a free show. She takes the stage with a flourish. This is like flourish. She dramatically fing flutters her fingers into Bay's eyes, dazzling, spellbinding him. The ropes of the Persian gallows uh, swing languidly in the desert wind. Yeah, Torbati jump across the border. Oh, no. See those gruesome vultures? Why are they descending in a spiral pattern? Oh, uh, unfortunately, the Zo Zoroastrians around there, they don't bury their dead? Uh-uh. In their culture... They throw dead bodies into large stone discs so the vultures can pick their bones clean. I mean, hopefully you're absolutely dead by then. Yeah. Uh, still warm corpse? Mm-hmm. Bones picked clean? They're such awesome scavengers, huh? Wow. Yeah.